Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany. So the fastest growing video on my channel is the one where I teach you how to mold and unmold chocolates. But it's been over a year since I created that video and I felt like now is a good time for a little bit of a refresher. In that original video, I used compound chocolate and I showed both polycarbonate and plastic molds. But in today's video, I'm going to show you how easy it really is to step up your game from compound chocolate right on up to Kuvacher chocolate. I also won't be messing around with the plastic molds today. I will only be using polycarbonate molds, but I'll do a couple different shapes just for fun. Now, if you still want to use compound chocolate, you definitely can. The process is the same. And if you're looking to use the plastic molds because you prefer them or that's all you have access to and you haven't seen my original video, just click on that here. My local chocolate store only has plastic molds and I made pretty chocolates with those for years. <laughs> so I definitely encourage working with what you have as you're learning and getting the hang of things. Oh, one other thing. If you want to learn more about the types of chocolate and what makes them different, I have a pretty comprehensive video on that. So you can watch that by clicking here. All right, so in today's video, I'm going to show you how to prepare your polycarbonate mold, how to add a really simple but pretty gold decoration to the mold, how to create your chocolate shells, and then fill them, seal them, and unmold them. So let's get to it. Here are the supplies that you'll need. The chocolate of your choice, mine today is Calibit dark chocolate, a polycarbonate chocolate mold or two, Today I'm using a classic half sphere, which is Chocolate World 2022, and a fun squarish one that is 1865 Calibut Academy, also from Chocolate World. Some cotton balls or pads, or some clean microfiber cloths, a couple chocolate scrapers, a microwave safe bowl. Some that work good are microwave safe plastic, silicone or polypropylene, a couple sheets of parchment paper, now, you can mold the chocolates plain, but if you'd like to add the decoration, you'll need a couple extra supplies. You'll need some edible gold powder and some type of alcohol. I like to use lemon extract, but you can also use a vodka or 200 proof food grade ethanol. And then to create the decoration, you can use a little spray bottle or some paint brushes, and I'll show you both ways. And the last thing you'll need is something to put inside of your chocolates. You can fill your chocolate with many things like chocolate ganache or caramel. Today I'm using some leftovers. <laughs> so I have some leftover brownie scraps from my other video and also some leftover chocolate ganache and um, espresso caramel. So I'll be using those today to fill my chocolates. If you'd like to try exactly what I'm making today, you can find those recipes down in the description box along with links to all of the other supplies. So the first step is to prepare your chocolate molds. If they're not yet clean, you will wash them with hot water and soap, but be sure as you get in the cracks and scrub them, use a really soft cloth like a microfiber towel. Once you're sure they're clean, you'll want to let them dry. You can let them air dry, or if you want to speed up the process, you can use an air gun or a, a blow dryer to blow all the water out of the cavities. Otherwise, you can get water spots, which is okay once they're dry. If you have water spots, you'll use cotton balls with a little bit of alcohol, uh, vodka, or um, the 200 proof ethanol works good. If, if there's no water spots and no uh, leftover chocolate fats or anything in these, you can just use cotton ball dry. It's basically just to buff the um, inside and make them shiny. So um, these are super clean molds, so I don't need to use alcohol. So I'm just going to use the cotton basically just to make sure the surface is like all shined up. And I'm just going to go in each one like this. And with this mold, there's so many, I'm not going to fill all of them. I'll probably just do half, so I'm just going to start with half. And I'll remember which side I did because um, I just don't want to clean all of them. <laughs> 
<laughs> Next up is the first decoration technique. I have my little spray bottle and I'm going to grab my gold powder and lemon extract. Going to add a little bit of lemon extract into the spray bottle. And put a little bit of the of my edible gold dust in here. And I'm gonna see what that looks like. I'm gonna shake this up real quick. Okay. It looks mixed and it looks like it has enough gold. You, I just eyeball it, basically. Um, you don't want it to be too much powder that it becomes a paste and you don't want it to be too liquidy or it won't be as uh, gold, but um, you can test it on a paper towel or something and give it a little spray and see what happens. Um, so, um, if you want to try to stay a little clean on your counter, you can just put a parchment paper underneath and put it that way like this. And basically I'm just going to spray the mold with gold. I'll stay to this side. This is the side I shined up. So I'm going to start at a distance. If it looks super runny, it might be too runny and I might actually want it a little bit more thick. I'm just going to pour some of this out. I'll use it later and add more powder and see how that mixes up. Give it another shake. Okay, that looks a lot thicker. So I'm just spraying the mold. And you just spray till you're satisfied, basically. <laughs> you can add as much or little as you like. And they'll all be different, but you know, they'll all be splattered gold, so. I just, I don't want to add too much that it'll pull in the bottom, but we've got a, a good different variety going on here. So, oh, that one was too much. I'm going to set this one aside and show you the next uh, decoration. So with the square mold, I'm going to do the whole thing. So I'll do it like this on my parchment and as you can see, this is super um, liquid and not as much gold, but I want it to be more gold than this. So I'm going to add a scoop of gold to that, take a paintbrush and mix it together. And then I'm just going to flick. So if you don't have a little spray bottle, you can use this technique instead. So I'm just flicking it on. And you're gonna end up with a nice gold finger. Is that a 007 movie or am I making that up? And you can test out different sizes of brushes in different shapes. Um, that's like a good medium size. This one's flat, um, but it is a little bit thicker. So it's making a little bit bigger drops. It's fun to just experiment and see what you like the best and using different things that you have. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with how many fun gold spots are on this second mold, so I'll set it aside. And here's what the two different techniques look like on the mold.
Now the last quick thing I'm going to do to finish these off is take off just that extra gold that's sitting on the top surface by just swiping it um, gently on a paper towel like that so that the gold is only left in the cavity. All right, so the molds are all ready to go, but now I need some tempered chocolate. I'm going to temper my dark chocolate using the easiest method that I know, which is the microwave method. If you'd like to learn how to do that, just click on this link or find the link down in the description box. All right, I've got my tempered chocolate here and I'm just doing a temper test before I fill the molds. It's been about two minutes and it's already looking matte and no chocolate on my finger. It looks like it's setting up good. So it's safe to assume that my chocolate is properly tempered and I'm just going to measure the temperature. It's 32.9 degrees, which is just about right. Um, you'll wanna check the temper chart for your specific brand of chocolate and the type that you're using. For dark, it's usually the working temperature is around 32 degrees Celsius. And so you want to keep it at your working temperature um, throughout the whole process. And when you don't have a warming tank or a temper machine, it can kind of be a pain because what you can do is gently keep it at the working temperature of 32 degrees if you're using dark chocolate with a heat gun, or if you don't have a heat gun, you can use a blow dryer. And I've got mine here. <laughs> So I'm going to just keep a close eye on the temperature throughout this process and um, gently warm it if it needs to be warmed back to 32 degrees. So I just measured it again and it's about 32.2 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and show you one method of filling the molds. So I'll start with the round ones and because it's only half, um, I'm just gonna do this one first. And you can use a ladle or I kind of like to just use a measuring cup. And this is the messier method. Um, but I'm going to try to be clean about it. You want to fill each cavity up to the top. And the less you overfill them, the cleaner this method can be. <laughs> You'll see why if, if I end up dripping over. If you overfill them, the chocolate will go around and over the mold and then you've got a little bit of a mess. But So once you've got them full, you're going to tap it on the edge of the counter back and forth like this to bring up any air bubbles. Once you see your air bubbles slowing down, um, then it's ready to tip over. And I've got my chocolate scraper here at the ready, but I'm going to show you one thing you can do. If your mold is small enough, you can dump it straight back into the bowl like this. And you want to tap it with the side of your scraper. This helps the chocolate flow out of the mold. Once you think that um, all the chocolate has come out, you will scrape it and check the thickness. It looks really good to me. So I'll set this aside. Don't want chocolate here. You can clean off the edges real quick. And then I'm going to scrape it one more time. Make sure it's really clean. If it's easier for you, you can do it against the counter like that. Just wanna make sure each edge of the shape is really clean. That'll help to unmold. I'm going to clean my scraper one more time and do it again before it starts setting up. Okay, so this looks really good. The shells look like a great thickness and they look really clean. To um, let these set up, I'll just tip them on their side like this at room temperature is fine until we fill them. So I'll just set them aside off camera and I'm going to clean my scrapers. It's nice to have a parchment here 
just catch any chocolate. Now, <clears throat> because I've added that chocolate out of the mold that has been cooling down and back into the bowl, I need to check the temperature here. And it's down to 30. So <laughs> this is the fun part. You gotta keep it at the right temperature. I'm going to just on low, gently warm it back up to about 32 degrees. It says 31.6 still. I'm just gonna go with that. Um, that's, it's close enough. So the next method I'm going to show you is how you can fill the mold using a piping bag. I'm just gonna use the disposable plastic one. Using my measuring cup, I'm going to just put some chocolate in the bag. I try not to make a mess, but I always do. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm just gonna pinch this and twist it like that and get my mold ready. I'm going to clip the end somewhere where it won't fly into the chocolate over there and Fill each cavity really quick because your chocolate, if it's tempered correctly, will set up fairly quick, which means you want to work quick. Ugh, I hate when I break my pattern. Why did I do that? Okay, set this off to the side. And same process, you're going to tap it. bubbles have slowed down. So this helps release the bubbles, like I said before, but also if your mold is something a little more intricate and has like little corners or edges, it helps get the chocolate down into the full mold. Now, if your mold is larger than your bowl, the other option for dumping out the chocolate is to do it right over a piece of parchment like this. Same process, tap. When your chocolate slows down, scrape it clean. Check the thickness. My thickness looks good. I'm going to slide this chocolate aside. You can reuse that. Wipe my scraper clean. And give this one last good scrape. Almost there. There's just a little bit of chocolate hanging on. All right, it looks really good and clean. I'll zoom up on these so you can see what they look like. So I just set this aside with the other mold until it sets up at room temperature. You can see that the round mold looks more matte. It's further along setting up at room temperature. So you can see the difference between the two. The square one is still pretty fresh, so uh, looks shiny still. Meanwhile, don't forget about your chocolate over here. And if you work quickly, you can add this chocolate back into it, which I'm going to do really quick. And then I'm going to make sure the temp is, you probably can't hear, <laughs> hold on. What I was saying is before I do anything else, I'm going to warm this back up a little bit till it reaches 32. Um, and I'm going to keep it there as I fill the molds with my fillings. So just be aware that I'm doing that in the, in the background of the video. All 
All right, so I don't know exactly how long it's been, probably 10 to 15 minutes, and I'm just going to poke in here. No chocolate left. They look matte. They're setting up nicely. I am going to fill them. And in these round ones, I'm going to be doing um, the brownie espresso caramel combo. So um, let's see. I want to wear two gloves, I think. I'm going to just make a little ball of brownie and squish it in. Um, Got to see how much I'm doing about that size. I don't know what to compare it to. <laughs> so I'm filling about three fourths of the mold with the brownie and the other layer will be the espresso caramel. So I'm going to fill these as quickly as I can because my chocolate's sitting and cooling down and I must keep it at that 32 degrees. Okay, that all the brownies are in. I just wanna make sure they're all nice and flat. All right, so I'm going to pipe a thin layer of caramel. If you overfill these, it will show through, so just be careful if you're doing caramel. They're kind of hard to, to cap. I'm just doing a thin layer. This um, caramel's really strong, flavored with espresso, so you only need a little. And as it sits, it'll settle flat which will be perfect to fill it. And I don't know how far under the top of the mold I am, maybe mm, 16th to an eighth of an inch you want to be to give yourself a decent amount of space to cap these with chocolate. Now, before we finish these ones, I will set them aside and we will fill the square ones. And I'm going to fill these with cho dark chocolate ganache. Okay, so I'm back with my tempered chocolate. I have kept it at 32 degrees. It's currently 32.5. I also did another temper test because you can never be too careful with chocolate. So um, it looks like even with my <laughs> steady warming up, it is still tempered. So we're ready to cap. Okay, I'm going to start with this mold because it has more filled cavities. I just feel like then I won't accidentally run out of chocolate or something. You can do this the clean way with the piping bag again, if you want, or you can do it this way. And I'm just going to do it with the cup. So I'm trying to not overfill them. So when you have chocolate over every Cavity. You can use your scraper um, to knock it in the gaps. Make sure you get rid of the air bubbles. and just scrape all the extra chocolate off. Right onto the parchment. And I like to switch, I'm just gonna switch to a clean scraper. Clean the edges. And one more clean scrape. All right, they look clean and good. I'm going to set them aside for now. 
told you I always make a mess. So you can't be surprised because I said it first. <laughs> Just going to check my temperature, just to see where it's at. It's at 31.8, which is just fine. Um, we'll just cap these real quick. Same method. Wanna make sure they're all covered. And with the caramel, because it moves around, you wanna try to keep the mold level. Scrape all the extra chocolate off. And one last clean scrape. Now, this is good to know. If you ever have any that are missing a little bit of chocolate, you can just take a small spatula Rather than messing up all of them, you can just add a little bit like this to the bottom. Okay, all the edges are clean. Now I'll set this aside to set up at room temperature and then we'll pop them in the fridge. Whew, okay, I just cleaned up the chocolate massacre and I feel so much better. <laughs> we all have our strengths and weaknesses, and one of my weaknesses is when I work with chocolate, I make such a mess. I, I don't know, I just can't help it. Okay, I'm going to take a precaution. Next, I'm putting these in the fridge to finish setting up so we can unmold them. But before I do that, I'm just going to add one layer of plastic wrap. This will just help protect the chocolate a little bit from moisture. Um, because in the fridge there can be moisture with, with other ingredients and things that you have in there. You don't absolutely have to do this, but it's just a little bit of a, just in case. So I'm going to pop these in the fridge probably for about 20 minutes, but we'll check them and see if they're pulling off of the mold before we try to unmold them. So it's been 20 minutes and I'm just pulling off the plastic. Um, you don't have to have one of these, but they're kind of helpful to have a little chocolate tray. And I'm just looking here to see, you can kind of tell if they've started pulling off the mold. Um, you can just see like there's a little space between. So I'm going to creep the mold a little. Oh, they're dropping out. That's beautiful sound. <laughs> that means everything went well. Oh man, I lost one off the table. Okay, to get the last view, I'll just tap the mold gently move the mold so I don't crunch any. And then our last one. They look great. Okay, um, oh, actually, going to slide these off. Here's our round ones. They look great. I'm going to scoop them off to the side and we'll do the square ones. Okay. Check them. Oh, they look good. Okay. Let's see if I can do the whole mold. <gasps> Almost. The last couple hanging on. All right. And there you have it. So remember the round ones are the ones I did with the spray bottle and the square ones are the ones I flicked and they do have a different look. Um, these ones are more, there's different sizes of splatters and just have a different look to them. And these ones are more uniform and the sizes of the splatters are closer to the same. So you can try it out and see whatever one you like best.
All right, guys, that's how you mold chocolates using a polycarbonate mold. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you found it helpful. If you did, let me know by giving me a thumbs up down below and leaving me a comment. It helps me out a lot. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, today's the day. If you'd like to see something else that's chocolatey and sweet, just click on one of these thumbnails. Thanks so much for watching today and I'll see you soon. Bye.